Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are doing a pick a card reading for the messages that you need to hear right now. What is it that you need to know? Things that you need to remember, messages that you need to receive. That is the intention we are putting out there. I'm going to have a couple different ways for you to choose. Obviously, if you like are drawn to something right now, go for it. I have the timestamps down below in the description. Click on that timestamp. It will take you to your reading. Of course, engage your intuition to use use it to um, to, to pick your card um, so that we get to those messages. And then when you get to your that reading, I use my intuition to read the cards for you. Um, one of the ways that we are going to choose is, you know, if you just see something you like, great. The other way is with objects. The objects I'm using today are crystals. This is, and they're going to be palm stones. Just, I think, calming Palm stones are calming and these are calming messages, messages to help you out right now. Um, this is blue calcite and that goes with group number one. For group number two, the palm stone I have is septerian nodule and that is for group number two. And for group number three, the object I have, this is rubellite and that is the um, really pretty kind of purpley um, crystal within the, the quartz there. So I also mentioned you can pause at any time so if you need to look at this great pause it. I also mentioned that we are going to do um, a, a, another way to choose and that is by actually seeing if you vibe with the cards. We're going to use our intuition and discernment these cards are witches of legends so they're all going to be witches we we are um um yeah we're masculine feminine we're all either way we're going to choose with these feminine icons so frau holda is the first one and i will tell you about them in each group so if you're interested about one but it's not maybe your group go there or not i will let you know about each one of these um, which is a legend. This is Oshun. And for group three, for this is Hecate. Um, and then, as I said before, if you're still not sure which one you want to choose, we're just going to do a little breathing exercise. So go ahead and close your eyes. This is really not a big deal. You can't choose wrong. Um, you're going to we are closing our eyes and we're thinking about our choice, but we're also thinking about being in this moment. Take a deep breath in and release. And as you release, just relax into this moment. Go ahead and keep breathing while I'm talking here. Think about what you need to hear, the messages you need to receive at this moment. We're releasing out anxiety. We're setting intention to get the messages we need to receive. Not Maybe not necessarily what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. Finally, take a final deep breath in and release. And open your eyes and wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the group for you. Um, appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I do these kinds of readings, pick a card readings on the regular. That's the kind of thing you like. Think about liking and subscribing and I will meet you at your reading. Hello group one. So we have, <laughs> can't pick her up. We've got Frau Holda right now. Um, if you chose this group, she is ancient. I guess that depends on how you, yeah, I would say ancient. There are things that are uh, less old than her that we consider ancient. So we'll call her ancient. And the reason I say that is she predates Christianity. She predates the Norse pantheon. And she is from that area. So she is Germanic and Scandinavian 
and um, many of the stories about her have been lost to time, unfortunately. Um, one thing that I think, uh, if you were drawn to her, a message that comes through is survivor. Because, like I said, she predates those things and many stories that were told by the, native, the natives there, the pagans, um, were folded and wrapped up into Christianity. I'm going to speak about that more with Oshun, too. So, um, but she still is around. She's still known. She still emerges. So I feel like that is an important message for you. Um, keep going. There might be forces working against you. Uh, but with her, like I said, she's just a survivor. She keeps pushing forward and maybe even reinventing herself. Um, because originally, she is believed to have been like gone on hunts. She'd be that huntress um, who is that Artemis in Greek mythology. So very kind of similar vibe to that, that huntress that um, uh, goes goes out and hunts and of course you know in that type of culture hunts are very very important that's how we feed everyone and food when it's not readily available we can't go down to the corner um, somebody is they're very important so it may be like kind of a downswing for you is kind of what I'm seeing like you felt really good and then like, like right now maybe you don't feel you feel less important than you really are actually or that you should be like your feelings of course we have an ebb and flow to them um, and don't be afraid to especially if you're thinking about it to reinvent yourself if you've come out as one thing like I said she started off as kind of this huntress and then later there are stories about her being a champion for women but certainly fierce fighter survivor as our Frau Holda and messages for you. Keep going. Uh, if she can survive the church, I mean, there was actually a conspiracy with the church who wanted to bury her legend. And if she can survive, we've got the staying power here. Um, so can you. Very interesting. Um, we have the moon, we've got the five of fire, we also have four of pentacles, and then we've got the pay, or this is the ace, the ace of fire, the ace of wands. Um, stability and then reinvention here, reinventing yourself. There might be something where you flew a little close to the flame where you stood out a little bit and you caught some flack and this is just kind of like keep going um if you are doing something to attract haters for instance i i kind of feel like you're doing something right um somebody who does nothing and stays at home all day that is the person that's never going to have any haters but if you're going out and you are like having these victories and I, I do really see her here on her horse like having like riding off into the sunset almost in victory sunset and we've got the moon so um yeah and and I feel like you're really trying hard like we have this um you're almost like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks something is gonna stick now when we've got the four of pentacles the four of earth here maybe we need to be a little bit measured about what what we invest our time in, what we invest our money in. Maybe, because um, I kind of feel like we, we hit a bump in the road, we hit a little of a, of a uh, obstacle, and that's okay. That's the human experience, we all do. This is a teaching moment, this is a learning moment, this is a time to go, okay, wait a second. This isn't working. What is, what isn't, what do I wish would work? These are the kinds of things that I need to think about. Four is also a number of stability. This four of pentacles. Pentacles is about stability. Pentacles is about, you know, maybe bringing our dreams back down to earth. Um, the moon shows up. Our, our path isn't necessarily clear. We don't have 
are you know and you you've got this light that you're shining that you're like looking around where is my path um there's an interesting statistic about um vehicle crashes that most of them maybe 75 80 percent of them occur at night we don't have the visibility that we have in the day. Sometimes it's just a matter of waiting until the right moment. Sometimes it's just a matter of dipping into, I don't, don't dip into your <laughs> intuition when you're driving. But if you've been on this road before, you know where the curves are, you know what to look out for. If there's a new pothole though, you don't know that. So there, there is a bit of caution here moving forward, but there is something new brewing for you. I'm just gonna read what these say. The other interesting thing with this deck in particular is that these letters in the corner here um, refer to a specific archangel. So I'm just going to let you know that. Um, this is Hanael, this is... Um, this isn't, uh, I have to remember what J.E. J is. Um, I think this is Meta uh, Michael? Michael and Metatron. Metatron, Metatron, there's a controversy in the names there. Anyway, the moon. Things aren't necessarily clear right now. Um, and it, I love this too, this idea of Frau, Frau Holda, like coming out of the fog, coming out of this uncertainty. Listen to your intuition, pay attention to the signs from divine. Unnecessary worry. So you might be worried about things that really are not a, a thing, something to worry about at the moment. Let go of your fears. Uh, revelations that will make everything clear it's coming and I see that like you're holding up this light here especially when we've got wands you're trying to shine a light we're trying to move forward we've got this action going on uh, Frau Holda doesn't sit in one place she moves she makes things happen conflicts with others caused by opposing opinions sometimes these opinions and I, I feel like the four of pentacles is here for us to go like, hmm, okay, step back. Because this is a five, this is a four, step back. Is this valid? Does this opinion make sense? Sometimes opposing opinions come up and they make a good point. Sometimes it's not even relevant to you. So why fight it? And sometimes those opposing opinions just like shift your... It's, it can come in as a revelation and help make things clear. Um, walk away from drama unless the situation is really worth your time. This is something else that you need to contemplate. Sometimes drama is just drama. There is a situation right now where my, um, my, my mom and, and her sisters have had to make the decision to put their father into assisted living. Well that is a drama that's worth your time. You have to, there's something going on in somebody's life. You have to make a decision. It could possibly be a life or death decision. A drama that's not worth the time. Him calling and being mad that they, they come and ask him if he wants to eat dinner with them. Like, I, I understand, and they've, they're all riled up and they're wondering what to do about it. And I'm like, um, how about nothing? How about he just says, no, I'm good, and we're good about that. That drama's not worth your time. So it's evaluating these things, because sometimes something presents as a drama, and it's not really a problem at all. So just because something comes up as an issue doesn't necessarily mean it's an issue. This is part where you need to engage your intuition. You need to, this is, and this is what, um, there's going to be some dramas pop up that aren't really dramas. It's, you're going to decide if you're going to participate in these dramas. You don't have to. Just because you get an invitation to participate doesn't mean that you have to. And I think the Four of Pentacles is also here to remind you to stay grounded that, um, when passions run wild, it's it's time to go, wait a second, take a deep breath. What's really going on here? What's really the issue? What's really the problem? Um, because a lot of times drama is just the result of something. And sometimes it's not even the result of, of a problem. Um, stand up for yourself. 
So that's, you're important, you count. Um, there's this thing that happens and it's really crazy uh, when we're walking through like the supermarket for instance and somebody will be like, oh, you're in my way. Are you in your way, uh, in their way? Or aren't you just on your own path? You're, you're in your way, like it's your way. You're occupying that space. Now I get the understanding like if you aren't paying attention and somebody is trying to get around you, fine. But like, hey, uh, you know, you're not next. <laughs> I am, I'm here. It's important for you to stand up for yourself. That's the message coming through. And then very ambitious people. It's not a bad thing to have ambition. It's not a bad thing at all. Sometimes though, we know ambitious people and they're working on this and working on this and working on this and working, they're working on all of these different things and nothing ever gets finished. So, that's where the Four of Pentacles comes in. This is where the, okay, calm down a little bit. Let's bring this back into reality. Let's make a practical plan. Let's figure out what's working. Let's pick a direction and finish it. And that's going to start some new beginnings here. The Four of Pentacles. So managing your resources wisely. Do you need to be fighting all these fights? Do you need to be spreading yourself thin? Do you need to be all over the place? I don't know. You answer that question. Probably not. Probably not. Are you having an emotional reaction to something that isn't even an issue, isn't even a problem? If you are, what is that emotion telling you? That emotion, are you like getting invested in somebody else's drama? Pull it back. This is, this is a time for you to survive, for you to take care of yourself. Extremes in how you give and receive money, time, and emotions. Um, so this we got to think about some things. Where is our money going? I know this is, this is, we're getting it tax time here in the United States. It's time to look at our books, to look at those things. Where did our money go? Is that important that you spent, you know, however much money you did at Starbucks? Is that helping you? What can you do different? Maybe it is. Maybe that's just your mental health day. Maybe that is important. Um, but there, I imagine there's some other things that are frivolous that you don't need to spend money on. And, and if you're saving money, um, it, it's just important to map out where things are going. It's time to put some thought be to, behind some of the things that you do and some of the, your actions. Smart business decisions. Seeing things as black and white and being charitable. There might be things where you're like, oh man, I wish I could help St. Jude, for instance. I've been seeing a lot of um, commercials you may have before my video because I've been seeing a lot of them for that. And I'm like, you know what, this, this is something... And maybe it's not, maybe that's not a, a charity for you, but it's charity for me where I'm like, man, I, I want to send them money what can I give and and where can I hold back on spending so that I can give something? Because especially if you believe in karma, things come back to you. What can you give out? Can I skip this purchase and, you know, give five bucks to, to somebody who, who is really in need more than I am? And this creates a brand new beginnings, but also a lot of potential when we've got our Ace of Wands. An amazing opportunity is coming for you. I think it is lurking around right now, but it might be lost in the clutter. So let's start pulling ourselves back and out of certain spaces so that we can find this opportunity, the opportunity that you really want. Uh, be bold, courageous, and optimistic. Now is the time to take action. Um, do what you're passionate about. Sometimes we aren't doing what we're passionate about. We're kind of like doing what we think everybody else thinks that we should be doing. Um, and that's part of the Four of Pentacles too. We're taking stock of things. We're really looking at, look at that. Um, what is valuable to us. Wow, okay. 
So we've got grounded and centered, and then we've got hibernation and regeneration. So don't forget to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself first. I think these are kind of like in opposition to this five of wands where we find ourselves in conflict, where we find ourselves engaged in drama, where we find ourselves in somebody else's story, where we're getting mad about random things on Reddit, for instance. <laughs> and, um, those things that pop up, am I the a-hole? Am I... Does it really matter, like... For you personally, if you have an emotional reaction to that, if it makes you angry, if you feel like you need to tell this story to somebody else, is it really the best source of your time? Is it what is creating this opportunity for you? Probably not. Let's breathe. Let's relax. Let's worry about ourselves. Let's take stock in what we have. Let's look for stability. And then we'll look for these opportunities that really are exciting for us, that give us an emotional charge in the right direction, in the right way. Oh. Let's see what the fairies have to say for, to us. And we've got a lot. So uh, we've got journey. It's time to prepare for a journey. It may be impromptu or planned. Either way, make sure that you are ready when it comes. So this uh, um, four of earth is getting ready for that. And then this um, ace of fire is going out on that journey. This journey is something that speaks to your soul, that speaks to your passions. Make sure you're ready when the time comes. Pack your passport now. That came out in another reading I had recently, not, not so long ago. Um, nature sign. Be receptive to the subtle messages from nature as you go about your day. Nature talks to us um, continually. We need to be open. We need to only open our hearts and minds. This kind of reminds me of the moon and this five of wands. When we're in this five of wands energy, we're not really paying attention to the subtle signs. We're, we, because we need to quiet all of that clutter. We have too much going on and we are confused. Sometimes the moon comes up when we're confused. We have like confusion around us. We have to um, use our discernment. We have to cut back. We have to release things that that no longer work for us, that drama, that uh, maybe it is that you need to take a moment away from certain people because you can't handle the drama they bring into your life. Um, you can love somebody from afar. That is okay. And then we also have shine from within. Looks are only skin deep. True beauty shines from within and it's time for you to shine. This is time for self-acceptance and for revealing your true beauty. This is also the type of beauty that lasts forever. I think you do have a deep beauty. I'm not sure that like physical beauty is necessarily that important to you, at least from the other cards, but um, I think taking care of yourself is part of that, um, that, that beauty regime, that beauty regimen, um, making sure that you get enough sleep, hydrating, those kinds of things. It's really crazy how mental health and physical health, um, can, can't, dissect they cross they like what's good for your body is also good for your mind in so many ways moving your body even though this says hibernation and regeneration part of that um you know we don't want to atrophy so moving your body taking yourself on on a journey remember that journey taking yourself on a walk um, exploring. So the journey can be like, okay, I'm going to book a trip to Cancun, great, or Fiji, perfect. Or it can just be like, you know what, I want to just go and um, look at, see all the parks in my area. I want to join a club that goes hiking. I, I want to go shopping in the next town over. I've never been there. Those types of things. It's, there's new discoveries um, there's new opportunities waiting in discoveries for you. Um, and that is what we have. 
that's not all we have. <laughs> I wanted to circle back to the angels. So on this deck, we've got Hanayel, um, angel here on the moon card. So she is angel of joy. Her name is Grace of God. So if you're looking for joy, if you're looking to engage your intuition, uh, increase your spirituality, Archangel Hanayel, um, it, that's what she's here for. That's what she's coming through for. This is Archangel Jeremiah. Um, Hanael and Jeremiah actually work together. I, they all work together very well, but they work together um, developing spiritual gifts. So there's a very strong sense of intu intuition, spirituality, psychic abilities that are coming through. I think that's why we have the nature sign as well, because it's time for you to sharpen those gifts, and these two archangels can help you with that. Mercy of God is the name, or is the, is what Jeremiah means, the name of that meaning, and Jeremiah can help you make changes um, to your life if you're like, hey, this isn't going the way that I expected it to. I don't know what to do. What, what direction do I need to go in? Where do I need to turn? So this is Archangel Michael. Um, probably one of the big archangels that people have heard of. Archangel Michael carries a sword. I can, Archangel Michael is there to help us um, when we are... If you have energetic connections to people, maybe your ex, for example, and you need to release those, Archangel Michael can help you cut through those. Maybe it's an, it's an energetic connection to an addiction, a substance, caffeine. I think I mentioned going to Starbucks too much here. Archangel Michael can help you with those things. He who is like God is the, is the meaning of that name. And um, like I said, a very big and powerful angel. And then Emmy is Archangel Metatron. Metatron is um, also, it just, I guess it just depends on how you put the emphasis on it. If you need help in time management, um, Archangel uh, Metatron is here to help you with that. Um, he can bend time, so if you're feeling like you got a ton done in a little bit of time or you're really dreading something because it's going to be boring and then all of a sudden um, it feels like time has just flown by, that's Archangel Metatron stepping in to help you with that. Um, protector of children and very sensitive people. So if you have a sensitivity, like the drama going on, if you are like, okay, I get that, but I'm just an empathic and I am attracted to that drama and it gets loaded on me and everybody brings me their drama um, to help put boundaries around yourself, Archangel Metatron can help you with that because he is a protector. And then um, Archangel Michael can help you sever those ties. So it's interesting how many different Archangels came out for you. I think that um, you are very loved. I think that you are very, um, you know, this this shine within this uh, on a soul level, you are absolutely stunning and beautiful. And the assistance, I think maybe you feel alone sometimes, and all of these, yeah, all of the cards are, are picturing you here alone, um, but you have a very strong spiritual force behind you. Um, you have a lot of people on like the spiritual bleachers rooting for you and all you have to do is ask for help in any one of those areas that I um, talked about and you've got angels ready and waiting to to hop in and and help you with that so that's what I have for you group one I hope that you have an amazing day thank you so much for being here with me and I will see you in the next reading hello group two and we have Oshun for you so Oshun is a um, very powerful goddess. She is an Orisha, which you can uh, think of an Orisha like a spirit. Um, it's from the Yoruba religion of West Africa. 
Um, I actually have a friend who practices this religion. He is from Cuba. He's Afro-Cuban. And how that happened is this originated in, in West Africa. His ancestors were brought to Cuba as slaves. Um, if you watched the first video, I, or the first group, I mentioned something about um, Frau Holda, how uh, like they tried to get rid of her or the Christianity tried to take some of her stories and rebrand them in Christianity. They did the same thing with this Yoruba uh, religion. Where in the Americas, the slave, the slaves who were um, uh, practiced this religion, they just took it away from them completely. In Cuba, they kind of blurred the lines between the um, the figures in the Bible and the the figures of the Yoruba religion. So that kind of um, it's very strong in Cuba and I get that I got that information from my friend who is like I said from Cuba and he studies this this uh, religion and he's uh, very high up in the religion actually um, like uh, oh another thing <laughs> they often portray this religion like voodoo but it's kind of completely the opposite of voodoo it's all about light it's all about uh, and in fact um, he has a room in his house where he has all of the um, offerings and oh he has an altar to the orishas there and it can never be dark in that room he always has lights on or you know that's always lit because this is um, a religion that's like that. What I think is important for you, so while I find her incredibly interesting, she is related to water, and water can be incredibly loving and fruitful, but can also be very destructive. And in her origin story, it talks about the Orishas um, trying to bring life to earth and none of them can do it but she did it with water and water is very important and essential so stay hydrated but also I feel like there's a message in here about you can be as either um, you can use your life to be constructive or destructive and that's really up to you. And we're going to meet challenges, uh, but you are very powerful. So you choose how you how you use it, how what you do with it, um, how you use your life. The other thing that I think is really interesting about Oshun is she's extra. She likes the finer things. She's bougie. She likes all of those good things. So don't ever let anybody tell you. Um, that you need to hold back or that you're too much or that you know embrace that about yourself embrace those finer things let's get some more cards out here high priestess love it especially when we've got Oshun I think that she's very much related to the high priestess and this higher knowledge of um, Look at this, we've got two major arcana cards. So this higher knowledge, our intuition. Intuition is often depicted as water. Um, and then we've got the two of pentacles here. Important to kind of note what the water is doing here in the two of pentacles. Um, so I think that being settled or, or working on uh, grounding is important. Even though the two of pentacles is an earth card water in this is, is like emotions can bubble up and cause uncertainty or balance i think that we continue the theme of balance here in justice and then also in our two of water so 
it's important to balance things out. Maybe your constructive and your destructive nature. Um, I think it's also important to remember that we have within us, I don't want to say a darkness, but a capacity, because Oshun has the capacity to cause floods or create droughts. She has that capacity. She has that capacity for destruction. And many people kind of gloss over that. We don't realize that or we hide it. And when we hide it, that's when real destructive nature comes out. And what I mean by that is if you're like, nah, that could never happen. Or no, nobody would ever do that. It's kind of like, hey, you have to look at the worst case scenario so that you can like guard against it or push forward or not go down that path. You need to, you can't be in denial of something terrible happening because it's when we are in denial that terrible things actually really do happen or can happen. Okay, so it is, a, who is it like, uh, Jordan Peterson, and he gets a lot of flack for this. If you're not a JP fan, that's totally fine, but I like to watch a lot of psychology videos. And one thing that he talks about for men is having that capacity to be a complete monster or tyrant. And you're like, well, that's terrible. Oh yeah, it is. And he admits that. But if you know you have that in you, then you never need it. Um, I know people who study martial arts and they never have to use their knowledge, but it's because they have that confidence that they could do something if something happened or that they could more. I know more people who are amazing at martial arts and who are not afraid to get in a fight, who never get in a fight just because they're not afraid to get in a fight. That makes sense. Okay, so the high priestess. Uh, meditate and turn inward to discover your soul's true desire. This is not the time for action. Develop your intuitive gifts and trust the wisdom you receive. The archangel that comes through on this, I'm just looking, there's these little um, guides here of the different archangels. And this is Hanael, and I know that she is the archangel. She is of joy, um, but she's also of intuition and developing those types of skills. So um, at this moment, too, there's not a lot of action going on for you other than trying to balance some things out because these three cards are about balance in a very real way. You might be juggling way too much or you might feel like you have too much on your plate. Pay attention to what you're putting on your plate. I was listening to a comedian and he was talking about how his wife is like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like all of these things. And he's like, but you did that to yourself. <laughs> she like goes around the house with a, um, a label maker. And she label makers everything and everything has to be in its place. And if something isn't in its place, then she's like, oh my gosh, you know, I have this, all this work to put things. He's like, you did that to yourself. Just calm down. So what is it that you've done to yourself that you need to calm down about? Um, or, you know, she interjects, he like, uh, what did he say? He, he, uh, he's a coach. And so he and this other coach, they wanted to do, uh, they wanted to get the boys that they coach pizza and a bounce house. They had it covered. They're like, okay, you get the pizza, I'll get the bounce house. Perfect. And then they're like, he tells his wife that that's what's going to happen. She's like, I don't have time to throw a party. He's like, you weren't even invited to do that. So calm down, chill out. What is it? And this almost, there was some messages like this in group one as well. So one and two are, are very much connected, but um, about how like 
mm, were you really invited to that? Do you really need to get involved with that? What are you juggling? Uh, I know people who are really ambitious at work and they're like, oh, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm completely overwhelmed. Well, did you need to volunteer for all of these things? Do you really need to do all of that? And at the time where you're saying like, I can do that, of course, like it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like people can depend on you. But if you can't deliver, that's another thing. So um, under promise and over deliver is another message that comes through. How much happier are you and you call for food delivery and they tell you, okay, well, it's gonna be like 40 minutes, but it comes in 20. You're super excited. But if they told you, oh yeah, we're gonna be there in 20 minutes and it came in 30, you're mad. So be realistic as well when we've got the, the, um, this earth sign here, this pentacles card. This says working too hard or multiple jobs, the need to bring balance and fun into your life, juggling multiple pri priorities and balancing the budget. This also reminds me of group one because that kind of came up, that whole budgeting thing. In the US, if you're watching this when I upload it, it's tax time. <laughs> I think any time is a good time to balance our budget, get a handle on our finances. But um, this is especially true right now. Like, take a look at where your money went and where you're going. And I'm procrastinating because I don't want to know where it goes because I know where it goes. I don't want to know because I know. And then we've got justice. Justice, look at this. We've got our scales of justice. We've got our balance. You need to be even though we have emotions running through all of this as a common thread and we have water that represents our emotions in this card the water is tumultuous because we're letting our emotions get the better of us we need to be the observer of our emotions and understand that like Oshun we control that we let it go and let it flow where it needs to go and flow. And justice talks about being um, impartial and objective, looking at those emotions that we have going on. What does this tell us? What does this mean? Why am I feeling like this? Many of you might be empaths and there might be things that you are picking up from other people that you were just trying to understand yourself and you don't get it. But when you're like, wait a second, is this really mine? Or am I getting this anxiety off the person next to me? Because energy is transferable. And if you're next to somebody who's super anxious, is that their energy? The recognition of that allows you to say, wait a second, this isn't mine. Um, I'd like to help you with that, but I can't handle it. I can't keep it. That's why we have... Um, uh, those pets, the uh, emotional support pets. Why? They calm us down. They help calm us down because their energy, their calm energy reflects back to us. Now, have you ever seen those emotional support pets that are just bouncing off the walls? That's because <laughs> you can't, and it's hard, I get it, but they're taking on too much emotions from their, um, their person and they don't know what to do with it. So how can we regulate our emotions so that we can be impartial and objective? How can we look at our emotions and examine them? And that's when we start asking questions about our emotions. We need to stand up for what you believe in. If you don't have a sense though of what you believe in, that's kind of hard and many of the things we believe have been programmed into us as to we believe that so I'm just gonna leave that there and what I mean by that is if you live in India more than likely your religion is picked for you by your culture if you live in the United States more than likely your religion is picked to you by your culture who you who are your parents what did they believe and that becomes your beliefs now Standing up for something is great, but do you even really believe in that? Think about it. Sometimes the answer is yes, and then you can stand up with integrity. But sometimes the answer is like, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. 
And then that's when you see a lot of people like leaving certain religions or becoming spiritual over religious or maybe even becoming religious over spiritual. Whatever your path is, whatever your intuition is telling you, that is what's right for you. So, but it's, you have to listen to it. You have to actually engage it. You have to start asking questions of it. So many people don't. Um, try to see all sides of the situation. This is, this is, um, this isn't Archangel Michael. I was thinking Michael because of the swords. This is, um, I will tell you in a minute here who this is, but, oh, and this is also related to Libra, hence the, the balance here, hence the scales. Um, this is why this angel is on a pedestal. We are looking from above. When we are in the middle of a situation, that makes it really difficult for us to be impartial about it. And um, we have to take ourselves out of that situation to really, um, to really figure it out. This is Archangel Raguel. Raguel is a relationship counselor. So it might be about relationships, especially when we've got the two of cups next, where you're feeling some uncertainty here. Um, Raguel can help resolve an argument, clear up misunderstandings between people, or just generally see things go well among individuals or groups. And Raguel means the friend of God. So he can help come in and smooth things over. We already talked about Haniel being the archangel um, of joy, developing that sense of your intuition, your spirituality. And then next on the two of um, pinnacles here, this is, our, the Z stands for Archangel Zadkiel. Um, this is the righteousness of God. Uh, Zadkiel is the educational tutor of the archangel realm. So if you need to remember something, if you need to learn something, um, learning tests, remembering, Zadkiel comes in and helps with that. And then finally, this, this last card where, that we have here on the Two of Cups, we'll talk more about the Two of Cups and balance. This is Archangel Raphael. Raphael is the physician, the physician, physician, the doctor of the archangels and his name literally means God heals. If your health is challenged, if you're dealing with physical pain, Archangel Raphael is who you pray to or ask for help with. Um, the angel doctor, uh, traveling, safety and traveling, those types of things also for Raphael. Um, and then also if you're seeking a romantic partner, which is why Raphael is on the Two of Cups. So Two of Cups, Twos, balance, justice, balance, everything is balance here. Balancing what? Our emotions, because we've got the water, we've got our intuition. Balancing the, that gut feeling that we have. Um, Two of Cups talks about falling in love or resurgence of a romantic relationship. This is also, um, you know, we've got Cupid here. We've got two people holding a cup up. This is your partner. This is somebody who sees things the way that you do, or at least is willing to talk to you about those things. We're willing to bounce ideas off of each other. Forgiveness and the ending of challenges. Um, part of this two of pentacles where we are feeling unbalanced, you might need to forgive somebody. Some of you might need to think about that. Exchanging gifts and don't give up on people you love. All right, that was a lot, and I have more. Um, two more ducks. <laughs> Let's get two cards out of here. What else can you tell us for group two? What do they need to know right now? Um, so if you are single, when we have the two of cups, this is a good sign that you could be um, finding that relationship that you're looking for, manifesting that relationship. Look at magic water, strength and resilience, 
Um, you're weathering the storm. Look at these two figures. Isn't that interesting? That's why I love working with different decks because the the messages come in. So strength and resilience here, but um, the two of pentacles gets a little bit deeper into that strength and resilience, a little bit deeper on like, hey, what are we bringing into um, our reality though that we need that we can release, that we can let go. What is this storm that we're bringing in? Do we need to weather it? Do we need to walk away from it? Do we need to just take shelter like these cats are taking? Or do we need to be like, you know what? I am stronger than I know. And then we've got magic waters. And this is about feeding yourself, feeding your soul. And then look at how interesting these waters are because she is feel, filling her cup first. And the water going into her cup, there is more coming out of it than coming into it. Such a deep message for parents, especially moms, about this filling your cup first. You need to take care of yourself. You need to make sure that you are fed, that you have water, that you are taking care of you, that you have had a shower. This is in the air, you know, when they tell you when you're getting on a plane, when you're going someplace, to put your mask on first and then you can help and assist others. So make sure that you are secure and then actually more water flows out because you have taken care of yourself. Because instead of putting yourself in a cycle of drought, you have put your, yourself into a cycle of prosperity. And then in that cycle of prosperity, you can go and feed and help and water others. What else do we have? I feel like that is something that comes up in readings so much and it's something that even I know, but it is something that needs to be reminded to us because it's it's something we don't always do. And then our final two cards, this is out of a fairy deck, fairy spotting, it's time to go fairy spotting. It's said that seeing is believing, but in fact, the opposite is true. Believing is seeing, so believe in yourself. Um, whether you believe in fairies or not, don't invite them in your house, just, just say. Um, fairies are bright and lovely and beautiful, but they're tricksters and they don't need to be in your house. They're in the forest. Um, what is it about yourself? This is almost kind of like a fake it until you make it kind of thing. Sometimes we, we want to be this thing. They, that's also kind of like dress for the job that you want, not the one, the one that you have. We're like, oh my gosh, you know, I want this, this, I'm juggling here. <laughs> I want this promotion. I want to do this thing. I want to be this person. I want to, you know, and I need to take on all of these things and, ah, you know, and you just get piled down and it's kind of like, you know what? My boss doesn't work this hard. I don't, I believe in myself. I have confidence in myself. And that is more important than um, feeling like you need to take on all of these things. That confidence is really the key. That understanding of um, believing in yourself, believing in um, your path and in your choices. Lost and found. What was once lost is about to be found. Thanks to the lost and found fairy, sometimes she can help us find things we never realized were lost. I think a lot of times, especially in the two of pentacles here, we get so caught up in the moment that once we put those things down, once we bring down balance to our world, we're like, wait a second, I have been working so hard, I didn't even realize that I wanted to invite love back into my life or I didn't even realize that I was missing these things with my friends or I was missing going on hikes or I was missing missing something. So it's the time where you need to consult your intuition, quiet the, the doubts about things that are going on, go forward with confidence. You don't need to work so hard um, to, to have... Um, safety, security, um, to have the life that you're dreaming of, to, to find the things that you're looking for. What you really need is balance. What you really need is to feed your soul. What you really need to do is is um, take care of yourself and you, this too shall pass. You, you will get through this storm and there's calm waters on the other side. But I feel like a lot of this and the message for you is that 
Just breathe. Just calm down. You have the power within you. So that's what I have for you, group two. I hope that you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group three, and we have Hecate. She is an ancient Greek goddess. She was a titan, and she was the only titan, I think, by Zeus who there was, okay, so the Titans existed and then the Olympians who was like Zeus and Hera and, and Hades and um, came, came in, okay, so the, t and then there was a battle between them. Um, I think Zeus banished all the Titans, but she was the only Titan to not be banished. She has three heads, the three-headed goddess, and I, I'm sorry, I don't really know the significance of that. Sometimes when I see the three heads, I think of maiden, maiden mother crone kind of vibes, um, kind of like the, um, in, it, that's what it, that's what it elicits for me. So if you have a different, um, interpretation of the, of those three heads, please let me know because I think there is somewhere where it explains those. It also kind of reminds me of like the, um, the triangle in uh, in Christianity of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit kind of thing going on. We we see that that triangle or that that group of threes um, a lot within um, symbolism of um, spirituality and and religion. Um, but we also see it here in the phases of the moon. She is related to the underworld and she's really important in that. It's important too because we just, if you're watching this video when I upload it, we are just going into spring. And spring is very much related to her. The goddess Persephone is the goddess of spring, but she's also the, the queen of the underworld. And how that happened was Hades abducted Persephone. Um, Hades, uh, Persephone's mother, Persephone and her mother were the ones who grew things. Demeter was the one who, who grows things. And when Hades abducted Persephone to be his queen, Demeter didn't know where she went. And Demeter was like, I am not growing anything until I get my daughter back. Um, Hecate saw that, and Hecate told Demeter where Persephone was. So she's really important because then that's where the um, compromise came in, and this is why we have spring and summer, and then fall and winter, because Persephone is the goddess of spring where she comes up, and then everything gets grows through the summer, and then she goes back to the underworld and becomes the queen of the underworld, and stays with Hades for the other part of the world, or for the other part. Of the year. So very important in that. I think what is important for you in this reading and Hakate is, you know, stand on truth, who you are. You might also fit in to places where people would think that you wouldn't fit in. And what I mean by that is she's a Titan, but the, the Olympians didn't mind having her around. So it's kind of like that one time that I went to a goth bar, but I was dressed as a cowgirl and they were cool with it. Um, don't, don't be afraid to be who you are and shine your light um, in, in that way. So it just you be you because you're magic, you're a, a magician. Wow, very interesting. We have the world and then we've got the three of air here. This can talk about having a broken heart. Um, there's an ending coming there to that broken heart. I think there's part of this where you have forgotten who you are. When we have the magician, we have the three of swords then followed by the magician. The three of swords is an energy where um, we kind of forget things. Why? Because we're having this uh, emotional meltdown or we're thinking about our broken heart or we're thinking about something that brings us sadness. This is great sadness that will heal with time. Uh, let go of the past, personal growth that comes from challenges, healing misunderstandings, 
being there for those in need. It's really important to be there for those in need, but the other thing about that is it is challenging. So it's not un unexpected that you might have some challenging challenges here. Um, it's not unexpected that you may have lost yourself a little bit. Maybe you'll have lost some of that magic. Sometimes when we're in a relationship and then that relationship ends, whether it be a friendship, it could even be a job where you were like that person and then like maybe you became a stay-at-home mom for a while or maybe there was there's a job in between that just wasn't the same and you feel like you've lost a step. You feel like you're missing missing something. Um, and the reason I say that is really because of these other cards here. This is, it's good news. You're we're recapturing that. We're moving forward. The important thing is kind of like, hey, remember who you are, this divinity here. And I wanted to switch places with this because I feel like the world comes in after this three of swords energy. We've got two major arcana cards here. We've got the world. We've got the magician. We've got the knight who moves forward. We've got a lot of forward movement, but this card, for some reason, and I get it, it is hard to heal from. It is hard to forget. It is hard to forgive, even when we know that we should. Um, the world talks about an end in, ending coming, a brilliant success, a time for joyful accomplishment. And I think sometimes when we're in the middle of a breakup, we... <laughs> Or, you know, we think about our ex and we, we just like, yeah, the joy, like maybe I'm happy that I'm not with them anymore. Or sometimes we have to write down things like, okay, it's unfortunate, I was hurt, but because of this person, I learned this thing about myself. Um, or because of this person, I, re I repressed this part about myself, and now I am grateful that I can move on and do this. Maybe I never got to go and eat at seafood restaurants because I dated this person. Maybe they were allergic to cats, and now that's not an obstacle in my way. It's remembering things that, like, yes, we, there's an emotional setback, but now we can move forward. Maybe we lost that job and that was really hurtful, but now it's time to really like go, you know what, I didn't want to do that anyway, or I didn't like that company, or my boss was really terrible. It's so funny how um, I think in you know, our boss is a really important person in our lives and we don't think about it enough on how toxic that relationship can be. So yes, we can mourn something even if we're happy we're moving forward. And trust me, there's brighter and better days ahead here. It kind of definitely reminds me of this Hecate in that circular, cyclical, <laughs> That cycle of spring, summer, winter, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter, you know what I mean. We are moving into spring. We are pulling things out. Look at the infinity here with the world. There, and then it is repeated over here with the magician. This has ended. This, and we're kind of like at the dip here, and things are cold, or things are, are looking up. Things are looking up, especially when we release, especially when we forgive, and re because forgiveness um, kind of cuts those cords, those emotional cords that we have with this energy, with this path. It's kind. It's time to rise up and kind of like look at those emotions that we have around it. Think about them. You might even journal it out. Like I'm thankful for that. Why? Um, I'm happy. I'm moving forward. Why? And then that will help you to bury it and let it go because we are moving forward, onward, and upward. Um. So a brilliant success, a time of joyful accomplishment and spiritual enlightenment freedom to do whatever you want. Be proud of yourself. This is a new freedom 
what are you going to do and what are you going to create with it? I think you're finding new things about yourself or rediscovering things about yourself. I think that as hurtful as the ending of a relationship or an ending of a job or ending of whatever this ending is, that you are finding new freedom and ways to express yourself and you are looking at things that you have suppressed yourself for because we have to use magician, not musician. We have the magician here. We have somebody who creates things in the physical world that brings your dreams into reality, especially very powerful with the Knight of Pentacles, with the Knight of Earth. This is magic. You are magic. Magic is alive in your life. Um, what you need to be successful will manifest. And especially, I think, if you start working towards it, there's not somebody here questioning you anymore. And, and maybe that was, there was a certain sense of security there, but there's excitement now that you get to create and you get to have success on what you want to do. And then if you believe it, you can do it with the magician. The magician is such a powerful card. We're releasing this so that we can move forward without the baggage of the past here. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles also moving forward. Um, things might be slow and steady. It may not... Um, Again, but we have a repeat here of the, the cycle of the seasons because we have our knight who is planting this field. Things take time. We've got to plant our seeds and take care of it and water it and set goals and be practical. This is loyal, dedicated, protective, apprehensive. Plan carefully before you taking action, but then get going. Pay attention to the details. Wait for perfect timing. I feel like this is perfect timing or when you feel like you have released something is perfect timing. Um, a guardian angel. We're going to talk about angels here in a moment, the angels that are showing up on these cards. Or someone who watches over you. It's interesting that this is guardian angel. This card talks about guardian angel when there's not an angel associated with the card, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, the angels that are associated with each card, that's what these like little letters are here. So we start off with Archangel Ra uh, Azriel. That's this AZ, this Azrael, and this is the Archangel that's with you with your broken heart. This is somebody coming to your aid and telling you that everything is going to be all right, that you are whole, you are perfect, giving you a hug. Um, Archangel Raziel is somebody who can help you with that. If you need to pray or write to an angel, if you want to bring in help to really get over um, this heartbreak, Raziel is graceful and elegant. Um, he literally radiates compassion and comfort and unending love. And sometimes when we have our heart broken and it feels like a bottomless pit, we just need that love. And Archangel uh, Raziel, or Azriel, A-Z-R-A-E-L, Azriel wants to come in and help you with that. Mercy of God is what um, Azriel means. And he can help you find solace. Um, next, we have Archangel Jophiel, and that's who is depicted here on the world. Archangel of Beauty. Don't forget how beautiful you are. I think there were compromises here. Sometimes things don't work out um, for a reason. And your beauty cannot be suppressed it needs to shine through, it needs to shine on. And Jophiel is the Archangel of Beauty. She's associated with roses. Um, if you've ever smelt roses, it might be because Archangel Jophiel is around you. Uh, Rose-colored glasses, this is helping you see the bright side of things. Um, she's the one who just is like, you know what, yeah, that's too bad that that relationship ended. But like I was saying before, but now, there is an opening. Now there is opportunity. Now there is space for you to be who you are and to really uh, embrace who you should be, um, who you um, are, like your destiny. I feel like this, 
there was something about this this loss, this relationship or this job that you've left that was really holding you back. And it's time to break things open. This is um, the RZ stands for Raziel. It's R-A-Z-I-E-L. I know all of these archangel names. Um, the secrets of God. So you are uncovering secrets, but you're also uncovering secrets about yourself and how powerful you are and your manifestations and all of the things that you can do and you can accomplish. Um, the famous sorcerer Merlin, if he had been uh, an archangel, he would be Archangel Raziel, which is why it's on the magician. Bringing dreams to life, bringing things into reality. That's the archangel you work with uh, to bring things into your, to bring things to, to reality, things that you want. What else do we need to tell in group number three? Air magic, air magic. Wow, and then affirmations for healing the heart. I'm just going to put these over here because I'm not surprised to see this show up when we've got the three of swords. I'm not minimizing this at all. I totally have been through breakups. I've lost jobs. I have had heartbreaks. And just like um, our archangel here, Azriel, we have people who love you and who, like, if you physically don't have anybody around you, I highly suggest that you ask Archangel um, Azriel to come in and bring you comfort. Because now is the time to ask for help if you need it, to do things that um, bring you comfort. Comfort food, okay? It's, there's really something interesting about comfort and comfort food. Those comfort foods are usually like mashed potatoes or something very like heavy, usually like root vegetables. And there's a reason for that because they're so grounding and grounded. Or some people have comfort food because it reminds them of their childhood, kind of going back to our endless potential. Don't be afraid to dip into those things that you find comfort and comforting. Okay, so don't forget to hug yourself and love yourself and surround yourself by people who love you. And then we've got air magic. Look at this air magic. Um, air magic is almost like speaking spells. Um, you might want to actually physically say affirmations to yourself. I think that could be really powerful. Um, another way that I like to use air magic, it's interesting that he has a quill here, is I will write down things, especially when it's related to something that I want to release and get rid of. I will write something down and then I will burn it. And that releases it into the universe and releases it into the air and gets rid of it. What other ways can you think of magic manifesting itself in the air? Singing, maybe? Music? Let's get two more cards here on messages that you need to hear right now. One more card. Messages you need to hear. Wish wisely. Love that. But we're going to talk about temptation first. Are you in denial about an unhealthy habit, perhaps one that makes you feel guilty? This very says you have the power to overcome temptation, whatever it's guys. So the temptation, like this could have been a very unhealthy relationship and you know it. Well, you can still mourn it. That's okay. But there are bright and beautiful things coming forward. This talks about a lot of strength and fortitude on your part. It's interesting. We have the snake here with this. <clears throat> kind of like that that forbidden temptation, um, that forbidden knowledge with that the snake uh, tempting Eve. So sometimes we just have to like walk away and get this, get away from our temptation. Sometimes we have to set boundaries and move past and move forward past that. Um, sometimes we have to set goals for the future that we know that we can have. And then look at this, wish wisely. Use your wishes wisely to manifest your heart's desire and take practical steps towards making your dreams come true. That is this, 
practical steps towards making your dreams come true. This is all about that. You can have anything and everything that you want. It's just about you figuring it out. And you're smart enough, you're brave enough, you are gifted enough to figure that out. Um, sometimes, and probably people around you are going to be like, wow, how did that happen? That's lucky. You're making your own luck. You're wishing wisely. Wishes set intentions. Intentions create goals and goals create your future. So um, think about the things that you want. Set those wishes up. What is it that you really want? And I kind of feel like this over here, this heartbreak, is something that is either distracting from your goal or is something that was in in the way of your goal to begin with. You may have had to sacrifice something about yourself, something about um, your life and what you really want, your dreams to, to hear. So maybe it was like you were sacrificing your time to a job where you weren't going to advance or, but you know, at the time you were just in it. Or maybe you were sacrificing where you were living for a person who just wasn't in it as much as you were. And I think there's something here about this this person or this job or this heartbreak where you were more invested in it than the people around you. And I think that part of it and part of the hard thing to get over it what is that you know that, but you're kind of losing the potential of what might have been or what could have been. That's okay. We're letting that go. We're actually creating what will be. And we're creating exactly what you want. Not you compromising over here. This was a compromise. We are bringing in and things that you don't even know that you want. This is beautiful. This is There's a lot of beautiful things in your future. That's what I have for you, group three. I hope that you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you in the next reading.